friends, it's Deanna, also known as Magical Done Mama. Today I thought we would do a little bit of a shopping haul from Adore Me and Unique Vintage. And I also wanted to show you a few of my favorite beauty products that I've been using this month. I thought that maybe we could relax together and read a little bit of the Haley Mills book that I um, received for Christmas. I've been dying to dive into it and I thought that maybe reading a few pages could be very relaxing. And I wanted to show you a few makeup bags that I got from Jujubee. So it's gonna be a bunch of clothing, makeup, and a lot of fun. So let's get right into it. So the Adore Me items and Unique Vintage items were gifted to me to do for different campaigns. But the first Adore Me item that I wanted to show you is a bathing suit. Last year, I wore a lot of Adore Me bathing suits because they just fit amazing and they have ones for all different body types, which I love, you know, the body positivity. So this one is actually a size large and it came in the mail last month. Right, let's see if I can figure what is going on here okay there we go so it is half purple and then half orange it has a little open peekaboo belly moment there in the center and then it has a lower scoop back I would say that it's not too cheeky it's a little cheeky but I think it covers enough. I definitely um, don't wear ones that show my entire bum, but if you do then, and you have the body for it, then <laughs> good for you. I just cannot, I don't, I'm building my confidence. I don't have that, I'm a, that, in, that much confidence yet. Not quite, maybe someday. But this, I really loved that it was two different colors. I also love the tie in the center there. The purple is absolutely gorgeous. And I thought that it was just a little bit of a tropical vibe and really, really sexy and cute for a one piece bathing suit. I love it. It does have um, built in like a little bit of a cup in there. So I liked that about it as well. The straps are also adjustable. So all in all, it's just a really amazing quality um, bathing suit. And I do size up in their bathing suits just because um, I'm definitely much smaller in the middle of my waist. And then I have quite a bit of a curve where my hips are. So I always size up when it comes to bottoms. But since it's a one piece, I just I sized up anyways. But I think this one is going to be perfect. Secondly, I knew that Adore Me had activewear and loungewear, but what I didn't know was that they actually had clothing. And I was shopping on there one day, picking out some items, and they had dresses and camis and all sorts of things. So I picked up a couple of their clothing items. This first cami is made by Sugar and Lips. It's a size medium, and it's just a really, really pretty floral baby pink cami. Um, it does have a longer front or side there as you can see. So and it does have a little bit of let me see if I could show you. It has a little bit of a button detail on the bottom. It is not um, very stretchy. Beautiful colorful flowers. I don't know how well you could see the colors, but they are very pretty. And then the back has a little bit of a ruffle to it. So with some denim, this would be really cute with some denim and some sneakers or even this pink sweater that I have um, on right now. So this is one of the camis that was on their website and it also has adjustable straps on it. I love things that are like floral and dainty. My husband says that I like things that are very grandma-ish, but that's a very stylish grandma. And then I also got another crop top from them. So I have a lot of scars on my stomach and y'all know that but I've really been trying to embrace wearing things that I wouldn't normally wear, not wearing things that are like outrageous, that like scream 
look at me, but I've been starting out slowly wearing things around the house that I want to get comfortable wearing and then wearing them out in public. And just like something like this top, this top is an adore me top. It's a size large, so I got it a little bit bigger. And it's a blue floral crop top, but it has a elastic strap, has elastic top, and then the bottom is actually elastic as well. It just has navy blue and white um, floral moments on it, which I really, really like. And it does cover my entire um, stomach, but um, in, you have about like an inch difference between my waist and the denim, and I'm learning to love that and show a few of my scars. And I just thought that this top would be really beautiful for spring, really beautiful for summer. Um, and I've been in desperate need of some new clothing. I have a hard time getting rid of old clothing, but um, uh, slowly transitioning to new clothing. So I love this piece. And then the next thing that I got is an Adore Me bodysuit. Something that I've always been wanting to wear has been bodysuits for the longest time as well. And I just haven't liked how the tucked in look was on me, but I'm learning to love that as well. And this Adore Me bodysuit is a size medium. Um, I would size up if you don't want it to be very clingy to you, but this is one of the best quality bodysuits that I've ever worn. It does not have buttons um, in the bottom area there but it has quite a bit of stretch to it. And it's this beautiful gray blue color. Like you could just feel how thick it is. It's gorgeous, gorgeous quality. And then it has buttons that actually unbutton if you want them to. How I wore this was with some white kids and I had on just some denim jean shorts with it. You could always wear a sweater over it if you wanted to, but amazing quality for a bodysuit. Something else that I got from Adore Me was like a nude bodysuit, almost like, like a Spanx material, but it's so gorgeous to put under dresses because it's very light but it sucks you in in all the right places um and if you go to the adore me website and you go to essentials then all of those bodysuits are under there to put on under whatever type of clothing you want to wear them under so adore me is killing it with the clothing i love this bodysuit my husband liked it as well he complimented me on it which was a nice thing to hear the next thing i got from adore me is a dress and it is a very summery dress. This I got in a size medium, but I should have gotten it in a size small. It is like a gingham print, very elastic on the top. And you can see it has the thick straps there, but it's very stretchy in through here. And then it's just a long maxi dress and it has ruffles on the bottom, so. Very, very nice for spring. Just like that, maybe with a hat, some cute chunky sandals. So I'm just gonna slide it up. See how long it is. And then the ruffle moment on the bottom. There we go. It's really, really pretty and very light. And I had no idea Adormi made things like this, so. Really, 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 really cute for spring. For Easter, for summer, maybe for a little outdoors wedding that's super casual. Okay, and last thing for Adore Me, but I forgot the top upstairs, is Adore Me has these really great sets right now. And I love that Adore Me sells sets. I really don't like when you have to buy the top and then the bottom separately, and then it comes to be like a $100 set. Um, but I left the top for this upstairs, but something that they have right now are these biker short sets. 
They're really, really um, stretchy. They're sort of like a ribbed material there. And then the top was a top sort of like this, like a crop top. And it's just like a really nice workout set or a lounge set for around the house. But since I don't have the top, I won't um, take too much time on this. But I wore the top the other day and it was really, really comfortable. Um, so definitely check out their sets. I'm gonna go into some of the unique vintage moments for spring. So let's start out with this skirt. This skirt is made by Bailey Rose. Bailey Rose, but it's on the Unique Vintage website. And it is a pink denim skirt with pink floral detail. Very pretty for like a Y2K 90s fashion moment, Lizzie McGuire moment. This is a size large and it is quite tight on me. Um, so, and I think this only comes in a small, medium, large. I had gotten it in a medium and I couldn't get it over my hip. So this is the large, this is probably around a size eight. Um, so I would have even fit into an extra large in this, to be honest. Um, but it is a beautiful baby pink color denim color with the hot pink floral on it and then has pockets on the back which i really love really cute for spring this is on unique vintage bailey rose the next item from unique vintage i actually wore the other day to the parks and it is this ellison um denim ruffle coat and I had to get a small in this. I could have used an extra small. It runs very, very big. Here it is here. It's like a cropped denim button up coat. But what I really loved about it was the little ruffles on the neck. It just is really, really cute to throw over um, a sundress. You know, if you're going out to eat and it gets a little chilly in the restaurants, this coat is absolutely perfect. I wore it this weekend at Epcot and it was really, really light and comfortable. So this is um, made by Ellison, but on the Unique Vintage website. And it's just a great piece, like a transitional piece that you could wear with like a pencil skirt. You can wear it with so many different things. And I just loved how um, dainty the collar was, so I love that. The next thing I wore to Magic Kingdom yesterday, this is another um, Y2K fashion inspo look. This is made by Bailey Rose as well. It is, um, you, could buy, you have to buy it separately. So this is the sweater vest tank top. It's hot pink with red almost like almost like a really deep coral red flower detail and it is sweater vest um fabric quite a bit of stretch to it this is a size medium i probably should have gotten a large but since you can wear the um cardigan over it then it works for me um <clears throat> and then this is the matching cardigan now the cardigan runs much bigger than the sweater vest top does i'm just going to try and button it for you okay it has three buttons but i only did two and this is what it looks like here the sleeves are um a little bit bigger it is quite a heavy piece so you definitely want to wear it in cooler weather i got away with it yesterday at magic kingdom um yeah it's just really really cute you could wear it with so many things this is like my style a hundred percent i love this so obviously i really like bailey rose clothing items but i'll be getting a lot of use out of this for the next few seasons. So probably one of my favorite clothing items that I've gotten recently. It's just so bright and vibrant. I love it. The next item is a graphic tee. And in, it's, um, hmm, what color is this? It's not white, it's not ivory. It almost has like a little bit of a yellow tint to it. 
and it has three little holes, tears in the top here. And then it says, what a babe, instead of what a burger. It does look like the what a burger um, logo, but I had to have it because it has all the pastel colors. It has all the gems. And I'm probably gonna wear this with just some bell bottoms or that pink denim skirt would be really cute. This says on the tag, Gina. I can't make out what that says, but I know it says Gina. Gina Tees, it says here, but this is from the Unique Vintage website. You know I love my pastel moments, so I had to have this one. I got this in a medium, but it runs very big, so I would size down if you like your tees a bit more fitted. And then I also got this blue gingham romper from Unique Vintage. This is made by Pink Ripple. Just gonna tie the little bows on the sleeves here. I love gingham print for spring. And I am totally a romper girl. So when I was at my heaviest prior to my weight loss surgery, I um, <clears throat> always wanted to wear a romper, but didn't like how they looked on me. So now I feel like I'm the romper queen ever since I had my weight loss surgery. And I have a little bit more freedom with things that fit me. When I was at my heaviest, it wasn't like it is now where there's all-inclusive sizing for really trendy clothing on websites i was having to shop at like lane bryant and stuff like that and their clothing was really nice but it's not as trendy it wasn't as trendy then as it is now so it was hard for me to find things so any opportunity to get a romper i get them this is a size large i should have gotten a medium medium again it's by pink ripple it's very very stretchy all over so it has the straps are not adjustable um it just they are sewn right here, right here. And then you just tie it into a bow, but it's not adjustable at all. It's just meant for you to tie the bows. And then it has a very elastic top here and a cinched waist that is very elastic. It needs to be steamed, but at the bottom you can see that there's these really, really beautiful ruffles. So once this is ironed, this is just gonna be so, so cute with some little kids. So really, really cute gingham print romper and I love the shade of blue that it is. This would be really cute for Toy Story Land or just a Cinderella moment. Keeping with the gingham print theme is this puffy sleeve dress. This is made by, I don't see a tag. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so it must be just unique vintage then. So it is a um, beautiful baby pink color, peachy, corally shade almost. These are the sleeves here, almost like a little bow peep moment. The sleeve is very stretchy at the end and at the top. You could wear this straight on your shoulders or um, off the shoulder. It looks cute both ways. And then it's just a ruffle, layered ruffle dress. So like this and with the cute puffy sleeves. I love it. Also very cute for spring. And I really like ruffles too. I'm pretty like girly like that. I love, love, love ruffles. The next thing I got is a maxi dress. It is black polka dots with cream. It's like an ivory color top here. So it does have adjustable straps because you can adjust um, how you want the bows tied. And then essentially the top part here is very stretch. So this is a size medium. 
I would size down on this one. So you have the top like that, and then it just goes all the way down to the bottom. There's no ruffles or anything at the bottom. It's just very, very flowy. So I guess you could, if you wanted to, if you didn't want to wear the straps, you could tuck the straps in and make it strapless if you wanted to, which would be really cute as well with like a black sweater, but it does go all the way down. And this with a chunky sandal would be very, very cute as well. The last unique vintage item, it's gonna be hard for me to hold up. So I'm 5'3", I'm very short, but I wanted a pair of bell bottom jeans, jeans, flare je jeans, because they're coming back in style. Um, and I got these in a large, again, because of my hips, but um, they're very long, so I'm going to have to hem these in order to wear them. It's going to be hard for me to hold them up, um, but they are high-waisted denim jeans. These are made by Jealous Tomato is the brand, and I love the um, wash on these. It's not too dark. It's not too light. And then let's see how I can do this. They are very bell-bottom flare like this. Here we go. So like that. They do have the line all the way down the middle. So here's the top, the high-waisted top. Like that would so be really cute with a crop top. And then... This is how much it flares out at the bottom. So it's major bell bottom flare, which I love. So these are really perfect for somebody who is much taller than me, but I they fit perfectly on the waist. So I'm just gonna get them hemmed on the bottom. I'll probably have to take about this much off, which is quite a bit of the flare, but I think you'll be able to still tell that they're very much um, a bell-bottom jean and with some chunky shoes, it'll be really cute. So yeah, let's see. Yeah, very, very, very flared jean. And I love that they're coming back in style. Reminds me of when I was a young girl. So those are all the clothing items from Unique Vintage and Adore Me. I love those two shops, like two of my favorite ever. Now I have some of my favorite beauty products. Before I show you those, I wanted to show you this new print from Jujube. This is called the B set, B-E-S-E-T. And this is one of their newer prints. And it is animal print, but it's a beautiful peach, very light pink peachy pink color with the animal print. And then this set has three bags in it. It's got this medium size bag and then this small size bag. So just like that. This one um, is perfect for change, perfect for contacts, anything like that. This one I love for makeup brushes because it's elongated like this. And then this one you can use as a toiletry or makeup bag, or since it comes with a crossbody strap, you could just wear it as a purse if you wanted to, which is really, really cute. You could even wear this one as a purse if you wanted to because it has the hooks on the side. So this set is such a nice gift for somebody um and they have them in like the sensational snacks print the disney one they have all different prints but it's just really gorgeous and i'm always on the hunt for new makeup bags i feel like i go through them so quickly um and that anybody loves you know receiving them so jujubee is absolutely killing it with their prints this is one of my new favorites this would be really cute with a dress at animal kingdom just really really simple And then I wanted to show you some of my favorite beauty products. This 
um gigantic makeup bag it was a set of three made by mary mary square it says there mary square um and i got it at versana last spring but i just wanted to show you some of my favorite makeup products that i've been really into there's a lot of rare beauty products so let's start with this instead this is the physician's formula let me bring you closer to me this is the physician's formula butter bronzer in shade 6675 light bronzer i don't use too many physician's formula products but this one smells really good and I saw it on Josie ASMR's page. It smells like banana, tropical, suntan lotion. So I really just love, and it's very sheer. It's, it's what I have on now, it's not very dark. It's beautiful, so I like wearing this. And when you put it on, it's just like a little tropical getaway moment. I love it. The next thing that I've been using is this Wet n Wild Mega Glow makeup stick. I have been trying to get the Charlotte Tilbury um, want, like the contouring one and stuff, but they're sold out every single time I go to buy them. So on TikTok, I saw people using this as a dupe and it is um, Wet n Wild Mega Glow makeup stick, contour stick, and it's 804A Oaks on You. Oaks on You. And they have it in all different shades. So I got the darkest to do as a contour moment. I even contour my nose with it. And then there's also like pinks and stuff for you to do your bra uh, blushes with and whatever. But I had to go to a bunch of different drugstores to find this. I know they have it at Ulta, but since it's been so popular on TikTok, it's hard to find it. So I found this at a random CVS. Um, and I think you'll like it. If you can't find the Charlotte Tilbury products, I can't find them anywhere. So the next thing I got was in my um, FabFitFun box. It's the Fenty Beauty Diamond Balm. This is the Royal Icing shade here this is like velvet it's such a nice little sparkle moment and it's meant to put on on your face or on your body or on your chest it's just really beautiful in the light i wore it yesterday to magic kingdom and you can really see it um sparkling so this is a really really fun let's see just a little glitter moment on your cheek it really pops off in the light though like that really beautiful the next thing um, I wanted to show you is I also get a lot of messages about what type of lip products that I use these are my favorite because when I go to photo shoots or I'm going to the park, I don't necessarily want to be applying lipstick all day long. So these Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink lipsticks, they're almost like paint and they you only need a little bit and a little bit goes a long way. When I wore this for my wedding photos, I put it on at 9.30 in the morning and it lasted until the next day. Like this stuff is crazy good. Two of my favorite shades are Seductress. Um, this one is Dreamer. And then my other favorite one is Lover. L-O-V-E-R, Lover. And this is what they look like. You can find them at any drugstore. You can find them at Target, Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, Publix. Everywhere has these. And they're not very expensive. And a little bit goes a, a long way. So these last a really long time. I always have one of these with me. I found this because the person who did my makeup for my wedding photos 
um, put this on me and I just got hooked ever since. So Seductress, Dreamer, and Lover are my favorites. The next thing I've been obsessed with is this Rare Beauty, uh, Always an Optimist 4-in-1 Mist. And I put this on, sometimes I'll put it on my Beauty Blender sponges to just give them a little bit of moisture. Or you spray it on your face after you do your makeup look and it keeps it beautiful for the entire day. You could spray it on before if you wanted to. I've used it all three ways and it's amazing. Rare Beauty is the Selena Gomez um, makeup line and I have to say I love the simplicity of her packaging um, and the products are really really beautiful so any opportunity to try a Rare Beauty product, product I'm all about it. Something that my husband bought me for Christmas from Rare Beauty um, that I've really been loving is this beauty um, set here. And inside it has Blot and Glow blotting sheets. Let me see here if I can. Blot and Glow blotting sheets. I don't want to show you the mirror there, so I'm trying to, let's see. Yeah, it has the blotting sheets and then it also has a little powder puffer to just keep your makeup really, really beautiful. This is called, just it, it's just the blotting powder set. So it has the sheets, it comes with a hundred of the sheets. So if you feel like you're getting a little bit oily, you'll just take one of these sheets and you can just keep this in your purse like I do or in your makeup bag. Just a quick beauty little touch up moment. So the blotting sheets are right here for you to use if you're getting a little bit oily, you just keep them in this little packaging thing. And then it has the little powder moment to use. So this is just a cute little set to give somebody. I have to, I'm always looking for beautiful mascaras to use and Rare Beauty also makes one of the best in my opinion. This one's a little dirty because it's been rolling around in my makeup bag, but this is the Rare Beauty mascara that I've been using. It's just black is the color. Just like that. And then I have been loving the Rare Beauty as well eyeliner this is called perfect strokes eyeliner it goes on beautifully you can see the tip there it's what i have on right now all of her products are just stunning 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 these are probably my three favorite things the eyeliner mascara and the always an optimist spray and then this, I forgot about this. This is what I use every day. This is the Rare Beauty Cream Blush. I love the little pink packaging. This is in shade Nearly Berry, Nearly Berry. And then it's just a deep red cream blush that you can also, what I like to do sometimes is put it on my lips because it's a really beautiful shade, look at that. Or on your cheeks. A little bit goes a long way, right? It's just a really, really beautiful shade. I love it, makes me feel good, so I love this. Also Rare Beauty. I have been really into this e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer underneath my eyes, a little bit on my nose, on the tip here. So just, this helps me get rid of my mommy bags. And this is in shade Fair Beige 85843. 
amazing product here. It's so cheap. This is so cheap. Maybe $3.50, $4.50. I don't even know. Something that I use every night after I brush my teeth are these Mizzy Cosmetic Lip Lux lip scrubs. My favorite one is the coconut, but I ran out. So I've been using this cappuccino one. You can see like these. I've never been into lip care before. I always was like, whatever, like who, why am I going to, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, that's what chapstick's for. But ever since I've been using the Mizzy cosmetic products on my lips, the lip scrub and the lip mask and their lip gloss, it's changed my like my lips forever. They are, it's taken such good care of them. I really, really love Mizzy Cosmetics. So these are really, really gorgeous. Coconut's my favorite though. I do like the cappuccino one, this one, but the coconut in my opinion is much better. And then I have also been using the Olivita Anti-Wrinkle Eye Cream. This is a newer product for me um that I just started using a little over a week ago but I've used many an eye cream I need definitely some filler my I have a lot of extra skin on my face from losing weight so any eye cream um that works is amazing and this one has been doing so amazingly well for me when I wake up in the morning my face feels like sucked in so the Olivita Anti-Wrinkle Cream. Gorgeous. I also really love the Olivita. There's two different ones. F63 is the Cell Active Face Oil Serum. And then F59 is the Corrective Serum. So I just put these on after I wash my face. And then I put the eye cream with it and honestly these smell amazing and this is a great product i love these and then on my hair i love using kristen s products i really like using her regular shampoo and conditioner but i have also been loving her dry conditioner and dry shampoo i just love this one's the dry conditioner it just smells so good and then the dry shampoo works better than any other ones that I've ever used before. I just love the way her products smell so. So, 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 so good. On my face, I also use this Luma and Leaf Afterglow Serum. The bottle's almost done because I've used so much of this, but this is a really great product as well. Luma and Leaf is also amazing. And then for my lotion, I'm not a big lotion girl. But something that I have been using on myself and my babies are these Tubby Todd products. And this was their Valentine's Day one, which is their raspberry and currant scent. But my favorite is the rosemary and lavender. So, so good. And my children love these. These products are made with all good things. And for somebody who doesn't like lotion and I just don't like the way it feels on me like how oily it lingers and stuff this soaks right into my skin so tubby todd has changed the game for my children's um bath time as well so those are some of my favorite beauty products of the moment Let's put these away and then what I thought we'd do maybe for the next few minutes before I end the video is maybe read a little bit of this Haley Mills book that I got for Christmas. One of my favorite movies ever is the original tra Parent Trap. Um, so I had to have this book. And it is her, it's a memoir. So I thought that maybe we'd read a little excerpt of it. Um, the whole goal behind this is just for you to sit here and take a few deep breaths. Just sigh away the day. Just have a moment. Just nobody's expecting anything from you. You're appreciated. You're loved. You're safe here. And I just thought that we'd have maybe a moment or two and read a page or so to get started. 
So the intro is one, two, three, like three and a half pages. So I will read the intro and then maybe you'll go off and buy this book or if you want me to read more of it in the comments, let me know. Um, this is just a nice relaxing moment for us. So just listen, take a few deep breaths in and out and I'm right here if you need anything. So introduction. For years, I had been thinking about writing some sort of memoir, but for so many reasons, all my attempts had died on the vine. A short but life-changing bout with cancer in 2009, coupled with endless hesitation, and to be honest, my lifelong struggle to be organized had left me with a little more than a stack of dog-eared old exercise books, which was frustrating to say the least. I wanted to go back and remember to make sense of some of it all, not only for myself, but also for my children, who I felt deserved some clarity. After all, it was they who had borne the brunt, as well as reaped the benefits of my unusual childhood. I thought that maybe as well, I'd alternate from regular voice to some whispering. So let's see, and you can also tell me what you guys like as well in the comments in terms of tone. So then in 2016, I was invited back to the Walt Disney Studios by a charismatic character called Howard Green, the vice president of animation communications. We had a lunch with some friends, the great songwriter and fellow Disney legend Richard Sherman was there with his wife, Elizabeth. Arlene Ludwig, who had been head of the publicity back in the day, and also some new friends, Michael and Chris Buck, the brilliant co-creators of the global phenomenon that is Frozen. After lunch, they took me into the animation building, a place I'd visited many times as a child, where Walt's private office used to be. It is well known on that day Walt left his office for the hospital and for some considerable time after he died, nothing was changed or moved apart from a bit of the regular tidying by his secretaries. Everything was left almost exactly how it was when he walked out of the door for the last time, never to return. Eventually, of course, it had all it all had to be packed away, but not before every single inch of the office and every object and article in it was painstakingly inventoried and photographed and then meticulously packed away in boxes and stored under the care of Walt Disney Archives. One day, a smart young man, now director of the archives, named Rebecca Klein, had the inspired idea of restoring it to its original condition and turning it into a permanent exhibit, which is exactly what they did much like the art department would have done for the movie Saving Mr. Banks, only this time they had Walt's real materials, reconstructing everything down to the smallest, most precise detail. So as you can imagine, I approached his office with some trepidation. I hadn't been back since I was 18, and I didn't know how I was going to feel. But when I walked through that door, all my initial concerns fell away, as did the years, and I was literally sent back in time. First, you entered the outer office where his smiling secretary always sat at a small brown desk on the left. On the wall, directly in front of you on rows of glass shelves gleaming under the lights were just some of the Oscars he'd won over the years. In total, there were 32 of them, each one representing years of work, each one imbued with his genius, and each one collected by Walt himself via the Academy. Straight ahead was the door to Walt's office. I opened it, stepped inside. It felt like a waking dream. Everything was unchanged exactly as I'd remember it, as if Walt had just stepped out of the room and would be back at any minute. This was a simple and comfortable space. A sofa, some armchairs, not at all the office of a mo uh, not at all the office of a movie mogul designed to impress. Walt's office was a place to work and think, to meet and talk. The more I walked around, the more came back to me. On his desk, little objects, papers and letters in the tray, photographs of his two girls, Diane and Sharon, his wife, Lillian. 
a pen left on a pad with scribbled notes. Had he written to me sitting there at his desk? And there was the baby grand where the wonderful Sherman brothers, Richard and Richard, used to play for Walt. I remember them both sitting there like it was yesterday, performing this song they'd written for me to sing in the parent trap. It was the first song they'd ever composed for a movie. There was the little kitchenette with a bar and stools that had fascinated me as a child, fully equipped, every cupboard stocked with food and small bottles of Coca-Cola, all circa 1960. And as I looked around, I became aware of the California sunlight streaming through the window, filling the room with shimmering, dancing beams of light. It was like returning to the magician's study, a kind of sacred space. Afterward, Howard Green and Rebecca Klein kindly took me to the Walt Disney Archives and gave me access to this remarkable historical department, which is typically reserved for internal company research only. Of course, all my files were there too, relating to the six films I had made for Disney, and I was given unrestricted access to these. As I went through box after box, I marveled at how every single scrap of information had been preserved, recorded, and carefully filed away. Press releases, interviews, in-house memoranda, all the letters that I had written to Walt, many of which had to be typed out since my scribbling at that time was excruciating and often incomprehensible. And of course, all Walt's letters to me, I was struck by how sweet they were, how personal, generous, and loving. There was also letters between Walt and my parents, correspondence I was aware of but had never read, revealing tensions and disagreements about my career, much of which was a revelation to me. I was swept up by my memories. So many came flooding back, the golden years of my childhood, the films I made, and of Walt Disney, the man. Earlier that day at lunch, Michael had turned to me with his, his sweet smile and said, so come on, Haley, tell us. What was he like? The table hushed. They waited for my reply. And then it hit me. Of the hundreds of people now working at Disney, most had never known him, hadn't even met him. But I had. Walt Disney, Walt Disney had been a kind had been a kind of a surrogate father to me through my teenage years, and the studios had been my extended American family. For better or for worse, I'd literally grown up in Disneyland. And that was it. The penny dropped. Not a bolt of lightning exactly, but the missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle that I needed to write this book. For a while, this is the story of my childhood and of course my career. It is about time that it is now passed into history when Hollywood was still Tinseltown. And the great Walt Disney was in his ruling over what was, at least in his own head, still a family business. That is the introduction to the Haley Mills book. I could absolutely talk in a whisper the entire time. For me, that's so calming. Um, but if you prefer the softer tone of my voice, then we can do that too. If reading this book was completely boring for you, then also let me know, but I just thought that maybe sitting back and hearing a little bit of her story, a little bit about Walt Disney would inspire you to maybe read this book or maybe sit here with me and enjoy some peaceful moments together. So those are my shopping hauls for the day, some beauty products I like, and I am really excited to dive deeper um, into this book. So thanks for being with me today and I'll see you soon.